Yes, good morning. My name is Rosa Atchison and I'm a legal intern for the Surfrider Foundation. Um, the Surfrider Foundation is strongly opposed to permanent or long-term storage of radioactive waste at the deactivated San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station. We appreciate the efforts of SCE, the CCC, and CEP to develop an inspection and maintenance plan in advance of the minimal NRC AMP requirements. However, the IMP currently submitted has notable gaps and oversights that must be addressed to better protect the coastal environment and coastal community before being approved. Surfrider requests that the commission refrain from approving the IMP until Edison has further addressed key safety concerns related to on-site inspection and canister repair, transportability, and reporting potential canister issues. The Coastal Commission is responsible for protecting the coastal zone and its natural and scenic resources, and therefore has the authority to refrain from approving the IMP until Edison addresses these concerns. Next slide, please. The geologic, coastal, and seismic risks posed by a potential canister failure or canister being trapped on the coastline warrant an increase in the inspection rate and number of canisters inspected. Increasing coastal erosion, rising sea levels, groundwater rise, seismic activity, and songs proximity to densely populated areas are of particular concern and indicate the need for a more thorough testing plan. Additionally, the proposed IMP fails to provide any sufficient detail on the type of visual inspections that will occur for the ISPC concrete. The support foundation and ISPC pads, which are the structures at the bottom and top of the ISPC, are made with reinforced concrete, meaning it contains metal rebar subject to corrosion, which could reduce the structural integrity of the storage system as a whole and potentially impede the ability to retrieve canisters in the future. Finally, any indication of canister or ISPC degradation realized during an inspection should be reported to the commission and the public sooner than the proposed six month timeframe. Thank you. Up next, we have Katie Day. Ms. Day, whenever you are ready, please remember to mute yourself and state your name for the record. Thank you. Good morning, Katie Day, staff scientist, Surfrider Foundation. Next slide, please. Our hope. Our hope for this IMP was to have clear plans and procedures in place to ensure safety of continued storage on site and assured transportability of canisters in the future. However, this IMP lacks sufficient detail and verification of repair and mitigation strategies. Edison's plans to handle degraded canisters are inadequate as they rely on never before used technologies without sufficient or vetted backup plans. <clears throat> The only mechanism for repackaging loaded canisters is through the use of spent fuel pools. However, these are slated to be demolished before the waste gets transported off-site, leaving Edison and the community no other repackaging option. Instead, Edison is relying on repair mechanisms that have had minimal testing and lack verification that they'll meet federal transportation requirements. There's even less information available regarding the proposed grinding method. As such, Edison must submit a more clearly defined plan for exploring alternative repair and storage mechanisms that better ensure on-site canister integrity. Next slide, please. The only backup plan to the minimally tested canister repair mechanism is the use of a transportation overpack. However, Edison specifically states that they do not plan to get necessary approvals from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to use this overpack as alternative storage due to permitting delays. So without cooling pools, federal approvals for use of stated backup plans or long-term testing of the repair mechanisms, more consideration is necessary for alternative repackaging options to ensure canisters remain transportable, such as by constructing an on-site hot cell or retaining cooling pools. Finally, to maintain integrity of the ISPC and canisters, we'd like to see plans in place for responding to coastal and groundwater hazards, especially in light of sea level rise. Edison should preemptively have an established plan that utilizes triggers to identify when it's time to relocate the ISPC to keep it out of harm's way and out of our beloved marine environment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Day. Up next, we have the final speaker for this group, Ms. Mandy Sackett. Whenever you're ready, please remember to unmute yourself and state your name for the record. Thank you. Next slide, please. Um, Mandy Sackett, California Policy Coordinator for the Surfrider Foundation. So just to summarize, the inspection and maintenance plan does not meet the requirement of Special Condition 7. The proposed plan is not detailed or thorough in its inspection and repair methods. There are no reliable plans for ensuring repair and transportability of fuel casks. So we ask you to employ the precautionary principle here and address these major oversights. In addition to the public safety at stake in this densely populated area within sea level rise flood zone, 
We must also protect critical open space, wildlife habitat, and cultural resources. So next slide. So here's a summary of our requests. We're working to influence federal decision makers, but the Coastal Commission also plays a critical role in this process of correcting the insufficiencies of our nation's spent fuel, spent nuclear fuel crisis that should not be understated. As California's Diablo Canyon, Humboldt Bay nuclear power plants decommission, those areas will face similar issues. And we urge the commission to set a strong precedent here today that will protect the California coast from potential nuclear disasters, however unlikely. So um, please postpone the approval of the IMP today and ask Edison to come back with a more thorough plan as we outlined in our letter and here today. So just quickly in summary, um, increase the testing schedule to ensure canisters remain intact and transportable, require the vetting of the metallic overlay method before approval, require a defined plan for exploring alternative repair and storage mechanisms, require analysis as to whether an overpack is actually even legally adequate for offsite transfer in the case of a damaged canister, and require analysis of a possibility of a hot cell on this site to repackage the damaged canister. And finally, include a trigger for relocating the ISFACI on-site or off-site in response to potential coastal hazards, such as coastal erosion, rising seas, and groundwater rise. So next slide. Thank you so much for your consideration. We appreciate your time.